الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إمام القبلتين ونبي الحرمين أفضل الثقلين جد الحسن والحسين الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأب القاسم المصطفى محمد أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في قرانه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Then rely upon Allah Indeed Allah loves those who rely upon him my dear elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In today's lecture, we will be clarifying tawakkul and trusting God. The word tawakkul is the Arabic word for entrusting one's affairs to God. Essentially, the higher a person's knowledge and firm belief in God's lordship, the more he would place trust in God. Thus, doing tawakkul ala Allah. However, Trusting God in one's affairs doesn't mean that one's own efforts and struggles should be given up. If we trust Allah to aid us in our lives, this doesn't mean that we will attain what we wish without doing anything ourselves. This mentality is wrong. Rather, one should perform actions to the best of his abilities and then rely on Allah for his justice, help and beneficence. For example, when I, sh when I grow up and start working, I would, it would be nonsensical for me to sit on my PlayStation at home all day and think that trusting in God means he will bring food to my mouth. No, I should go and find work. Not only that, I should give nothing less than 100% in my work because my trust in God should teach me that if, if I give my best, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me accordingly in this world and in the hereafter. In order to develop this important trust in God, one must change his view about his own existence. Life of this world, human relationship, hardship and happiness, health and disease, wealth and poverty, success and failure, life and death, and become more realistic about himself. One must realize that the ultimate source of every bounty in, 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 the, in the world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every success, every benefit, and no harm or benefit can reach him from the most powerful, except with the permission of God. One must often ponder about these basic issues of his life and slowly develop his faith in God. Place his hope and trust in him, pray to him, and make plans for doing good actions, keeping in view both this world and the hereafter. The human being is the most superior creature on earth, in fact, has a very fragile existence. Humans, like any other creature, are never independent. Additionally, humans, like others, have no control over their birth, aging, and death. Similarly, disease, failure, sorrows, poverty, and other hardships are inherent in human life. From the richest to the most powerful human beings, no one can avoid them. Life of this world is meant to test human beings and is not a place of reward and permanent stay. Like we mentioned at the start of the lecture, in the Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 159, Place your trust in God. Surely Allah loves those who trust Him. A person who forgets God as His almighty creator and provider and, his attribute, and attributes His successes, possessions, wealth, and other worldly things solely to himself is more likely to suffer from harm if he loses them. On the other hand, a believer who places his trust in God is actually saved from anxiety, stress, depression, and other physical and psychological illnesses because of his relationship with God. His hope in God provides him strong support under the most difficult moments of his life and gives him happiness and strength. But what are the benefits of, the, of trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your affairs? 
for every living creature in this world. Life will end one day, and the time of death is not known. It is therefore better that a person should always keep his heart in state of complete trust with God, and not be influenced by physical causes, materialistic things, and temporary successes and failures. Rather, one should attach himself to the eternal values of God, then place your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who trust Him. Imam Ja'far Sadiq was once asked regarding the verse of the Holy Quran, and whoever puts his trust in God, then Allah suffices him. The Imam alayhi salatu was salam said, There are various degrees of trust in God. One of them is you should put your trust in God in all your affairs, being well pleased with whatever God does to you knowing for certain that he does not cease in his goodness, and so put your trust in God, leaving that to him and relying upon him in regard to that and everything else. The greatest, the greatest example of a family who had attained the highest level of tawakkul, who had faith in Allah in every moment of their life until the moment they died, was the family of Rasulullah, and the greatest display of tawakkul was on the land of Karbala, because on the day of Ashura, no one was spared, not the women, not the small, innocent, young children, and not even the sick. Yet this beloved family of the Messenger of Allah had complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Zain al-Abideen, the 23-year-old son of Imam al-Hussein, survived the massacre on the day of Ashura. Only because he could not go to the battlefield, he could not he could not take part in the battle due to his illness. After brutally murdering the seventy-two men and children, what did Yazid's men do? Did they let the martyrs' sisters, widows, and orphans mourn in peace? No, by Allah! On the night of Ashura, after sunset, Yazid's Yazid soldiers on their huge horses returned to Imam al Hussein's camp. They went to each tent and pulled off the hijab from all the ladies. The ladies of the household of the Holy Prophet of Islam were left with no hijab by those men who called themselves the followers of the Holy Prophet. What a bunch of hypocrites. Can you even begin to envision how dreadful the holy ladies must have felt to be without their hijab? In fact, being forced to be without their hijab hurt them the most part of all the suffering they were put through after Ashura. The holy ladies cried bitterly. They pleaded with Yazid's men, Please take everything, but please don't take our hijab, for we are the family of the holy prophet. We are the guardians of hijab. But the cool men of Yazid ignored their pleas. After snatching the ladies' hijab, the most precious belongings, Yazid men also looted all their personal sentimental belongings. Do you know what they also took? They took baby Asal's cradle, but the suffering of the ladies and children of the martyrs of Karbala did not stop there. One by one their tents were set alight. The frightened ladies and children ran from one tent to another trying to save themselves from being burnt alive in the raging fire. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu ayyamun qalibun yanqalibun.